I'm Destin Bailey, and this is Games Worth Playing, a show where we look at great video games and analyze a small part of what makes them successful. Kirby's Adventure, released in 1993, was one of the NES's final games. The Super Nintendo had been out for nearly two years at this point, and while that system's library was slowly filling with technical showpieces like Star Fox, Latter-day NES games like these were just beginning to show what Nintendo's original console was capable of. On a technical level, Kirby puts the entire NES library to shame with vibrant, colorful graphics, characters full of animation and personality, and 3D scrolling effects. It was also the first game to feature Kirby's signature copy ability, letting him gobble up enemies and take their powers, leading to dozens of unique abilities to take advantage of throughout the game. These things alone are enough to secure it a place in the gaming canon, but there's something else about Kirby's adventure. It's very, very easy. This might normally be considered a caveat, especially on a console that's remembered for incredibly tough, demanding games, but it's actually this lack of difficulty that defines what the game is all about. In an interview for the Japanese Strategy Guide, director Masahiro Sakurai said, Kirby was originally designed to be a somewhat easy game, something that a young child could enjoy playing. However, after the Game Boy Kirby's Dream Land was released, there was a lot of feedback from players saying it was too easy and too short. For the sequel I was thinking, how can I retain the easy parts but make it so skilled players could have fun too? That was when the idea of copying enemy abilities came to me. In Kirby's Dream Land, the most important ability is flight. This lets you stay far away from enemies, avoiding almost any kind of danger. If you do meet an enemy in the air, coming out of flight causes Kirby to shoot out a puff of wind, which will instantly kill any normal baddie, letting you immediately take to the skies again. You could drop to the ground and meet each enemy head on, but why would you when you can just fly over them? This is great if you're not so good at video games. You can just hug the upper boundary of the level and make your way past the vast majority of the enemies. Kirby's Adventure was one of the first games I ever played, and I spent most of my time doing exactly that. But having a single effective tactic that lets you bypass most of the danger wouldn't satisfy more experienced players. Sakurai's solution was to give the player special abilities from swallowing certain enemies. This forces you to think about the enemies you're flying over because there might be one that has a power you want to copy. Once you have an ability, you can't use it while you're flying, which means that you'll probably now use flight as a way to maneuver yourself into position to use your power more effectively. There are more than 20 different abilities, and each one has its own unique properties. Mastering the proper use of each ability is its own little challenge. None of the game's stages are especially difficult, but the novelty of trying out new powers makes them varied, replayable, and fun. And when the player who's been sticking to the skies sees what a good time they could be having with a particular ability, they're more likely to avoid the very easy tactic and start engaging the enemies directly. It's like a difficulty selector that you can adjust at any moment. You can avoid the challenge by sticking to flight, or you can drop to the ground and have a slightly more difficult but more rewarding experience. Trying to balance intentionally easy gameplay with the interests of more skilled players led to the core mechanic that defined both the game and the entire series. We often discuss very difficult games and how their difficulty can be an important part of their design, but we don't often consider the other side of that coin. That's in part because we think of completing hard games as a badge of honor, while easy is used as a synonym for boring. But the reason we see a lack of difficulty as dull isn't because easy games are inherently less interesting, it's because they don't often respond to different types of play. Kirby becomes a different game based on whether you're in the air or on the ground, and even with its relatively low skill ceiling, you can still feel a clear progression as you go from flying past enemies to fighting them on the ground to eventually mastering each individual ability. Kirby's Adventure is worth playing because it shows how compelling mechanics can be built not just around devilish challenges, but simple, accessible, and yes, easy stages. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. The show can only exist with the support of viewers like you.